Welcome back Ox Tools, I'm Tom. So uh, we're mixing up a batch of meatloaf here and uh, it's the usual mix of uh, varied subjects. Got a few tools to show. Um, got a little uh, modification uh, to a little bracket for a guy at work. Um, we'll probably talk about some upcoming stuff um, and show some slitting saws. Some guys have been asking about slitting saws and, uh, and how to pick them out and how to use them. So we'll kind of start in on that. And um, also the other thing is uh, some folks have been asking about searching for particular subjects in my videos. And uh, there's a cool way to do that And because um, I use uh, keywords when I, uh, when I upload the videos to uh, make the, the whole database of, um, of videos searchable. So uh, I'll talk about that a little bit and then show, uh, um, show you how you do that on, uh, on the computer. So um, anyway, uh, and there's probably a couple of surprises in there too. So uh, let's, uh, let's get cooking. Okay, so let's look at some, uh, some slitting saw stuff here. Um, you know, there's a couple of operations that uh, um, beginning machinists or people new to the trade have a, a, have a hard time with and one of them is parting on the lathe typically uh, gives some people some grief initially when they're when they're learning and the other one uh, has to do with slitting saws and so what we got here is we got a, a selection of slitting saws uh, just out of my tools and um, and then we have some um, some arbors here to mount them so I think what we'll do is let's talk about the uh, let's talk about the arbors first. Yeah, let's talk about the saws first. I think. Yeah, I think that's more appropriate. Okay, so there's there's several kinds of saws, and um, and I have a pretty good representation of them here, and um, that's one there, and then this is. And, I should have probably opened these up ahead of time, but I didn't, so let's get to see these come out. Here's a brand new one. Um, and this is a uh, milling cutter there. Okay. All right, so there's the different types. So, you know, you might look at these and go, oh my God, look at all that stuff. Um, you know, what do I use each one of those for? Okay, well, let's uh, let's... Let's just start, okay? So uh, what we have is uh, um, we have slitting saws, we have side milling cutters. Uh, this is a um, uh, also a slitting saw too, uh, carbide tip. Um, this is a screw slotting saw here, okay? And then these are jewelers, what uh, normally we call a jeweler's uh, saws. Uh, and they're characterized by the very fine teeth that they have in them, okay? And uh, so we'll talk about kind of each one here. And then in here, what we have is we have a, uh, this is another type. Um, and uh, this is actually a, uh, a Woodruff key cutter, uh, but it's an extremely uh, thin blade, so it can be used like these are used. Uh, and this one's been modified here. The shank's been relieved a little bit to, to reach down somewhere like that, okay? Um, so we'll start here. <clears throat> these uh, jeweler saws, they have very, very fine teeth. And uh, normally these are, uh, now this one's 12 thousandths thick, which is pretty thin. That's a very thin little saw. You don't cut deep with these, okay? Um, the, uh, the teeth are, are very small and they're for thin materials, okay? Uh, something like this here, this thin brass tubing. Uh, this would be a good choice for a saw to uh, to slit um, a slot through a, a thin wall tube or something very thin. You don't cut deep with these because there's no room in the uh, there's no room in the gullets here. This is the gullet. There's no room in the gullet for chips to collect. Okay, so consequently these can't cut very deep. <laughs> so it's kind of like you know they're just circular saw blades is what they are. So. If you unroll this and straighten it out, it's a hacksaw blade, right? So lots of teeth is thin material. Uh, very few teeth is for, uh, for thick material, okay? Um, so that's how you kind of think about those. Um, and these come in all different widths, and they produce nice, 
accurate gro uh, grooves or slots that are the width of the saw. Now these are interesting from a sawing standpoint because they don't have any set to them. And typically uh, the way these have clearance is they're thickest on the rim and they're thinner towards the center. And we'll go ahead and measure one just to show you. So this is a, uh, a little over a millimeter thick here, 045 inches. So it'll be close to, okay, so pretty close to 045. And then if we go into the center here, you can see that it's uh, uh, 437, so that it's, it's, it's relieved towards the center. So it's thinner in the center than it is on the outside edge. That's what allows it to cut. Now once again, typically, you know, you're only going in maybe that deep, like what I've got, <laughs> what, what I've got my fingernail over that. So you're really kind of going shallow with these guys here, okay? Um, now this one here, this is a, uh, a screw slot, slotting uh, saw here, which is a little different. Typically they're a little coarser, um, and um, um, you would, uh, uh, I don't have a screw, but if you had a screw, like a flathead screwdriver screw, and you wanted to put a, a, a screw slot in there, this is the kind of saw that you would use. Um, and, um, you know, that's, you know, would be a typical screwdriver slot width there. And what is that? That's, uh, 064. Um, uh, and this is high speed steel here. Okay. All right. So moving on, um, all right, we'll get those moving on. Let's look at this guy here. So this is a slitting saw here. This is more like a traditional circular saw blade and it's got the same kind of, uh, um, it's got the same kind of relief. It's thick here and thinner here, not much. Now this one you can go deep with, okay? Um, and typically your limitation on depth with a, uh, with a saw like this, this one's four inches in diameter by one sixteenth thick, is the diameter of the arbor that it's mounted to, okay? Um, so this is what you have to work with is this radial distance here. That's your maximum maximum depth. And uh, so if you need to go deeper, the saw has to get larger, okay? Um, now, four inch, you know, if you're in doubt on what, what size to buy, you know, three to four inch is a good size. It covers most of the work that comes up. Um, if you have a special job where you have to reach in a little farther, you might get a bigger one like a six inch, but um, they tend to wobble and run out more and, uh, um, you know, to buy the smallest, Use the smallest saw that, that will work for you, okay? All right, so these work good for making slits for clamps and, and, uh, and stuff like that. But if you want a really accurate um, groove, you use one like this. And you can see that it has cutting edges that extend inwards. So this generally produces a more accurate width slot, okay? Now the gullets are a little less and um, um, but these work really well too and this one has a nice, uh, a nice, this one's an eighth of an inch thick here. Um, it's got a nice hub on the center here, okay. Um, and then these are relieved, um, they're relieved back from the cutting edge. You can't see it here, but um, um, so this front edge here of this tooth is the highest point and then that's slope down at an angle that way. So, and then this has clearance behind the tooth that way. So that's how those work. And uh, you can get them, well, let's see, all these that I'm showing here have keyways. Uh, this one doesn't have a keyway here, but uh, um, you can use them with or without keys. Uh, doesn't really matter. Uh, a lot of milling machine arbors have keys already on them. So uh, you know, by default, they kind of put keyways in them typically. Uh, um, and if you buy these, you know, one inch, 25 millimeter is kind of a standard bore. Um, that way you don't have to have a million, uh, a million arbors. Okay. Um, and then I'm, I'm going to change the camera around and, uh, get another angle on this. And then, uh, we'll talk about this guy here and then we'll talk about some, uh, some arbors. All right. <clears throat> so, um, the last one is this uh, little key seat cutter here, and I keep a few of these around. Um, they're all one piece, um, but they're real nice because they, they generally don't run out. And a lot of times all you need is just a little tiny, uh, a little tiny cutoff or a, a, a small slit. Um, 
And these are relatively inexpensive. You don't need an arbor with these, although your choices in diameters and thicknesses are, are, are more limited also. Uh, but that's uh, um, just a uh, key seat cutter, and this is by Whitney Tool, and uh, they're in Bedford, Indiana. Um, anyway, uh, many people make these, and um, they're kind of standard geometries. And you can grind the shanks, and you can modify them a little bit uh, as required. So, okay, uh, so that's that. And so those can be used like slitting saws, too. All right, so let's look at some arbors here. And we'll kind of go from the, uh, uh, the worst to the best here. Let's look at this one first. So this is a pretty common style here. Uh, this is this stepped uh, business here, and they've got spring-loaded sections here. Um, these kind of suck, actually. <laughs> Sorry for my, uh, my language there, but uh, uh, they're not that great. Um, and um, so they're really only for real light-duty kind of work, uh, thin, low-pressure uh, cutting jobs. You would not want to do something like this. This is a bad idea here. Okay, you really want to mount this on a really good arbor, uh, partly because it's carbide too and it demands the setup be more rigid. Um, this would also be a bad idea, okay? So this is okay here. This will work, this will work. Um, this, uh, you know, you probably got a 50-50 on this one here. So, well, actually that would probably be okay too. Because uh, once again, you're not going very deep here, all right? Um, so. Anyway, these are, these are spring-loaded little segments here, and then you, uh, you clamp it. And you see there's no keyway here either, and uh, that just clamp. Come on, Tom, just put one on there, Mr. Wizard. Do that. All right, that's kind of the deal there. And you can uh, you can clamp these in the vise to tighten those up a little bit. Anyway, that's the idea there. And you see, there's not much sticking out. And you know, I only dare use a fraction of that stick out to to do a job there. So once again, shallow, lots of teeth, very shallow, coarse teeth. You can go deeper. Okay. Um, anyway, that's one type of arbor. Um, for the jeweler saws, these are okay, so that's why I have one. Uh, you see, I don't use it very much, um, but every once in a while you need a, a little tiny thin groove like that. Okay, so the next kind of arbor, these two are uh, what I would call my favorite style of arbors. Um, and um, actually, let's do this one first here. This one here, um, this is a fairly common, uh, commonly seen one. You see, it's got a nice long screw because it's got a nice long projection on the inside. Now these can hold, you know, actually fairly thick saws here. And it has a, a ground face in here, this is ground, and this is fitted to this real nicely here, okay? Excuse me, all right, so this would be uh, appropriate here. You see that fits real nice, okay? And then you go there, okay? And that's a good setup there, okay? It's well engaged in there, it's well clamped, not a lot of stick out, this would be a rock and roll uh, tool right here, okay? Especially with the carbide. Um, and it's a thick saw too, which uh, um, tend, uh, the thinner the saw, the, the less they tend to behave themselves, okay? So, so everybody, if you're gonna buy one of these, I uh, get an arbor and get a 1 16th saw and get a 1 8th saw and that'll cover 90% of what you need to do and then uh, build on that. Um, this is a good arbor here so um, if you see one of these on sale or whatever this is a, this is a good buy. Um, Alright, and then the next type, this is a, probably a, the more complicated type. This is a very strange one here. You see these every once in a while and this has got a uh, custom uh, Tom uh, accessory ring on it. And uh, the reason for that, um, okay, let's just show how this works first. Now this one's got a, it's got a removable key. Unless you're a putz or a boson. Um, there we go, it's got a removable key. And then, it's gonna be hard to see. So it's got a, and you know what, just take it apart. 
Let's take it apart. So you can see that's tapered. That's tapered on that surface. That's tapered internally. So those two go together like that, and it's got this little this little press ring on there, or a little adapter ring that mates it with the fastener here. Okay. Um, and then the um, the key drops in there like so. Everything's all secure. Um, so what happens is when I drive that screw down, it it opens that up and grips the saw on the ID, which is kind of exciting, and because uh, you know, it grabs it really well. And uh, so this is another good type of arbor. And then the other thing you can do with this one, and that's what this ring's about. Now this is the, one of the stock spacer rings here, uh, so you can space saws off uh, off here and. Originally, I don't have them now, but it probably came with multiple um, rings depending on the uh, the size saw or the thickness of saw that you were using. So let's just show what you can do with this one. So there you see we're not much sticking out, but that's kind of what we want in this situation because what that allows us to do, oops, okay, like so. Oops, I have that down all the way. And I'm not going to tighten this up because it's actually, it's difficult to separate these. So you can see here, I'm almost flush. Okay, and you can actually set it up, actually with an eighth inch saw, it probably is uh, pretty close to flush there. So what that means is I can come in almost on a surface like this and make a cut around something. Um, or come down on a surface that uh, has a projection in the way or whatever. So um, that's kind of a flush, uh, one style of flush mount arbor there, okay? And this one holds really good. Uh, I don't know who makes this. Uh, oh wait, maybe I can't see that. It's just, this is a really old one here. I've had this one for years. Um, yeah, well there's some people that make these. I can't quite read the name on that. What is it? So if you decide to make tools for a living, make sure you mark them really well. well made in California somewhere, I think, but uh, I can't, for the light, you know, I can just barely see the halo of the name on there. So, uh, you know, if you mark your tools, mark them so people can read them 20 years from now because maybe they'll buy them. Um, anyway, those are the arbors. Um, let's see, what else do we have here that we wanted to talk about? I think that's about it. Um, so we showed some arbors, we showed some different types of saws. These work great, these work great, um, and if you understand the limitations of these types, these work great too. Um, so uh, anyway, there's some slitting saw action. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to test drive this uh, uh, slitting saw here, and this is a uh, Four inch diameter by uh, one sixteenth thick. Okay, so um, it's a uh, hundred millimeter diameter and about a millimeter and a half thick. Um, and it doesn't say how many teeth are on here. And this one feels okay. It's not ultra sharp, but uh, it, it seems like it'll be fine. So, uh, and we're going to try this arbor first here. Okay, so. Um, we want to make sure we're going the correct direction here to start with. And let's just put the whole thing together. So you want to inspect these faces here, make sure there's no burrs or nicks on there uh, that'll affect the uh, the run out. Um, and then we'll just kind of put this together. It's a close fit. Okay, yeah, I'm going the right way. And then I'll tighten it up fully once it's in the collet. I'm just going to kind of hand tighten it. And with slitting saws, you know, you want to, or, you know, any big cutters, you want to just minimize your stick outs um, anywhere you can. It makes things nice and nice and rigid. Okay, that'll be good. Let's put it in uh, slow speed. Now, before I forget and do a boson, I'm going to tighten this up. And I'm snugging this pretty good here. This is a thick saw, so I'm going to give it a pretty good, uh, pretty good snug. And I got a chunk of uh, coal rolled steel here. Um, 
you know, we could cut aluminum, but you know, if you can cut this, you can cut aluminum, okay? That's a, so this is 20 millimeters. Uh, we're gonna take it all in one whack. Uh, it's 60 millimeters long. And let's see. We're just gonna dice a piece off here for fun. And so I got a parallel edge here and a parallel edge here. So what I'm hoping is that we'll slice a piece off and uh, be able to measure the, uh, measure the thickness also. So we'll take a little whack across here like that. Well, <laughs> straighter than that. And, um, and then we'll, we can measure the thickness and see how we did on that. So, okay. All right, so now uh, I'm gonna change the camera around and we'll talk about uh, some other stuff real quick and um, um, that is important. Okay, so we're up a little closer. So there's a couple things here. Um, the first is, um, you know, setting your, your depth this way. And normally what I do is I go ahead and start the saw and uh, loosen this up here. I'm not gonna do it right this second, but I c what I do is I hold a piece of uh, post-it note here and I come down on this very gently. And then when it takes this away from me, this will, it'll go away. I know I'm about two to three mils off of, uh, that's thousandths of an inch off of that surface, okay? And then immediately what I do is, uh, uh, once I calibrate there, I uh, usually what I care about is the center line of the saw, and um, so I'll drop down half the saw thickness and then recalibrate zero, then I don't have to think about uh, uh, that. Well, sometimes you care about this surface, uh, sometimes you care about the center line, and then rarely you care about the, the top surface. Um, that's typical. And then you can also pick up the periphery the same way very carefully. Um, oops, you know what, I should do it this way here. Um, slipping a piece of paper in here and then coming over in the Y and then when this is, gets taken away from you you know your saw diameter or wherever it's running out at uh, is um, uh, calibrated uh, with that surface okay and then we'll, we'll just go through that when we fire it up um, you know to make a cut here and we're just gonna you know drop down here I don't really care what the what the number is and we're gonna lop a piece off and uh, and kind of do it that way all right so the other thing is uh, you know how much to take in one whack right now this is where everybody gets messed up because counter to um, what you would normally think you know taking light cuts makes the most sense right well what we really want to do is we want to take this whole thing in one whack okay and uh, and not chew away at it and there's a reason because of what's happening with the chips. We don't want the chips to pack in a previously cut groove, okay? So if we if we nibble, and let's just say this is a section, hopefully, let's see, can you see that? Yeah, I think you can see that. So if we, if we make a cut like that, the first cut will be successful, right? But then if we come in a little deeper and the saw is doing, it's cutting in and then you have the radius of the saw, right? So what's happening is, all these chips that are happening here, they actually start to stack up in this area here, okay? And um, that's what causes trouble because what eventually they get wedged and then the saw stops and then all hell breaks loose. What we really want to happen is our cut to just be a clean cut. And so there's nowhere for the chips to pack. They just get carried along and then they come out which is where we want them to be, out. The gullets are more than large enough to handle uh, 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 light feed rates, which these things are generally you know, governed to. Um, but what we want to do is we want to wipe that whole inside surface and clear it out and not give any place for the chips to pack, okay? So that's a pretty important uh, thing that's a subtlety that, uh, that gets missed a lot on, uh, on these kinds of operations. So let's, uh, let's uh, I'll get my coolant kind of rigged up here. I'll move the camera around a little bit and then uh, we'll make a cut. All right, so let's, uh, let's calibrate the tool. Let's see. And we're running at between 100 and 120 RPM. This out of the way. 
So what we would do is just get close, slip that in between, and then I'm coming in on the Y. Okay, and you see how it just took the paper? So what that means is I'm a, about three mils off of, uh, off of that, the vertical surface there. I'm just gonna calibrate the Y just because I can. And then we're gonna come out. And like I said, we're gonna take the whole, the whole tamale in one shot there. Something like that. Okay, let me check the camera and make sure you guys can see all that. Eh, that's not a very good shot. I'm gonna, I'll move the camera around to the other side. Okay, so I think we're ready to go. We got cooling going. Um, these are important to, to kind of keep wet as we're, uh, as we're cutting. So uh, you want lube on these. And ideally it's something continuous, something dribbling on there that keeps... Uh, uh, keeps everything wet. Okay, so let's see. Everything's kind of snugged up. Let's uh, let's make a slit and see what happens here. Now I'm going to enter the cut real slowly here. And now you hear that rump, rump, rump. Okay, these almost always run out a little bit, so just kind of get used to it. Okay, so I'm engaged pretty well now. I'm going to start increasing the feed rate a little bit. Okay, so that's a full 20 millimeters uh, thick. And you can see the chips coming out there. Everything's pretty happy. So there's nowhere for the chips to pack in there. They have to come out. They stay in the gullets and they come out. It feels pretty good. moving the coolant a little bit there. So, you know, you can feel that the, a little bit of run out in the saw in the handle as kind of a throbbing uh, in the handle um, as you're feeding this. Um, like I said, it's, uh, you know, I haven't seen too many of these that don't have run out. Every once in a while you get one. Uh, this is the one you care about if it's wobbling that way. Uh, uh, peripheral run out isn't a big deal. Um, well, because usually you pick up on the highest tooth anyway, so... Okay, so it's starting to break out there. And we're just going to let it go, and that piece will just come sliding towards us here. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it will. And I'm not getting excited. The cut, the pressure is going down because there's less, less area. And here it comes. Right there. Okay, and we'll back up. All right, turn the coolant off, and then uh, we'll take a look at that piece. Okay, so 
We've got this, let's just go ahead and uh, we'll just measure it on the four corners here. Okay, so that's 270 there. 270. 269.9. 270. So you can see that it's pretty parallel. Um, and, you know, I don't know. I didn't do anything. All I did was just cut it off. It's nothing. Uh, it's just the inherent way these work. Um, anyway, uh, there's some slitting in steel. And looking at the cut here, um, I'm trying to wiggle it around a little bit. It's it's got some shiny spots on it, which means to me that this saw probably isn't as sharp as it could be. And um, um, so maybe we'll try that other uh, that other saw, um, the white. I have another another one, different style, eighth inch, a um, little over three millimeters. Maybe we'll try that one. Okay. So there it is. Just remember, take your whole thing in one shot. That's uh, probably the, the single best piece of advice that I can give you is to whatever you're cutting, just if the saw makes it through, do it in one shot. And uh, just feed slower if, uh, if, you're, if you're nervous. But you can see these chips, there's not much to them, right? There's plenty of room in the gullet for these, right? If you increase the feed rate, the chip volume would go up. Um, but, uh, you know, that didn't take very long, so. Okay, so we got this other uh, type of saw in here in the other arbor that I showed you earlier, and we're going to go ahead and just whack another piece off of there. Uh, same speed, uh, uh, same diameter, same depth of cut, and then all that, so let's, let's see how this one behaves here. Uh, it is, it is thicker, so let's see, uh, let's see what goes on here. And this one's also, it's brand new too, so. so I'm going to slow it down. Set it up now, so that's uh, 130 RPM. Alright, slow it down. I gotta find a sweet spot here. That's better. So here's the, this particular one that we just took off there. So, 229, 228, 279, 227, 229, 229. So with wind, uh, two mils, two thousandths. Uh, so the other one was actually a little bit better, um, but uh, as far as thickness, although uh, this had a, a factory edge on it, so this was two two cuts together, and let's see, yeah, it was this way here. 
and that's just a little tang that was left uh, when it came off of the corner. Now there's a lot more chips with this one here because it's a wider, it's twice as wide. Um, so um, the volume of chips is, uh, is larger too. So anyway, there's that style. This one uh, was tended to want to vibrate here. Um, you know, if we really wanted to do an extensive test, we'd put this one on that other Arbor that I showed before and uh, and kind of test drive it on that. But uh, you know what? You guys can do that too. So uh, I'm just showing you some of the uh, uh, some of the styles and some of the possibilities here. Okay. All right. I think that's it for this. Okay. So what I wanted to show here was. Um, John over at Double Boost and uh, Herb Blair, another YouTuber, um, have been making these uh, these little uh, little center finders like this, uh, and it's kind of a neat little project. Um, and uh, for finding the center of a of a piece that you don't know what the width of it is and you don't feel like doing the math, you can um, um, by nature of the way the thing works, it automatically finds the center. And then you just put a punch down through there and it finds the center. Or you can slide it along and you can drag a center line along that. Now, the reason that I'm showing this particular one is because this was something that I made a long time ago and uh, I, I'm just adding information to the discussion. Um, so you can see uh, this one looks a little different than, uh, than the ones John and um, and Herb and maybe Keld uh, Sorensen have made. Um, and they, it, this one has a bulge in the center here, you can see that. So one of the problems with this is, uh, is where, okay, so when you do this, you know the hole is in the center in this axis here, but where is it along this axis, right? Um, so by having a bulge in the center here of a known diameter, and that's the key, it's a known diameter, um, you can actually position this from the end very accurately here. So this is two inches in diameter, so all I have to do is whatever my dimension is, I add an inch to it, and now I butt this against here like so, and I know that that's exactly five inches from this end, okay? And um, we'll just, you know, Kind of see, and that, you know, how do you how do you position the thing, right? But if this is a known diameter, now we can set that off uh, with a with a measuring tool here. So we're in the center this way, and we're five inches that way. Um, anyway, I just wanted to add that to the discussion, um, and they've added some extra holes so that they can split this into quarters or uh, um, other increments. Um, and the only other twist here is. Um, instead of pins, I just had some cam followers here, and these are these are little rollers here. Um, and you know, I don't use this thing very much. Um, and do the rollers help? I don't know. I mean, um, I think pins are fine, and um, uh, they're certainly cheaper than uh, than rollers. Uh, but this little bulge here is uh, is kind of handy uh, for getting an accurate accurate measurement to to the center. Okay. Anyway, I just want to show that, and uh, if you haven't checked out uh, Double Boost or Herb Blair's uh, channels, you should go check them out. Okay, so I, I get um, a few comments about uh, searching for videos and things like that. So what I figured I'd do is I'd just show people how to do it here. Um, so this is, you know, a YouTube spot. Um, and let's just go to my channel here, Ox Tool Co. here. And um, there's that handsome devil right there. Okay, so here's kind of the main page here, right? And so you can do a couple of things here. You can go right here to videos, okay? And then it just kind of has this gigantic list of videos here. So, you know, some people say, oh, gee, you got to index these and do stuff. Well, a lot of them have multiple subjects in them, so that's actually quite the uh, uh, tall order to index all that and make sense of it. So I figure most of you guys are pretty smart and you know exactly what you know what you're looking for, right? So right right here, you see this little icon here. It's a magnifying glass, right? So you can actually click on that little puppy, and it says search channel. Oh well, how do you like that? How about something like? Uh, mini palette 
Okay. Let's try that. See what comes back. All right. Oh, look at all those mini palette uh, exercise or er, exercises. Um, these are uh, videos that contain something that has mini palette in it. Okay. So when I enter the videos in, when I do an upload here, okay, I I use a bunch of keywords when I put them in. Okay. So if I went to upload here, well, let's see what happens here. Um, I don't have anything. Yeah, we won't be able to see it here. Um, but this this would be what I see when I when I upload here, right? But I I enter all kinds of uh, of keywords uh, on each one of these. So this might have lathe, it might have mill, it might have TIG welding, it might say railroad track. Uh, so anything that's in the video that I think's of interest or uh, you know potential search word or whatever, I, I try to include in the in the uh, in the hashtag or the tags and um, uh, and search keywords, right? So uh, let's do another example here. So we did mini pal. Let's try uh, um, knurling. Okay. So there's knurling. Let's punch that in. Let's see what comes back. Okay. So straight knurling demonstration. Press pins. Uh, something simple for the shop. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I don't remember any knurling in that particular video, but uh, I'm, I might have used that as a keyword for some reason on that one. Okay. So. Um, Anyway, these are uh, um, ways that you can search this inventory of videos and find the things that you're looking for. So let's try uh, TIG for TIG welding, right? And let's see what comes back. Okay, so here's a bunch of videos that come back uh, um, that have the search word TIG welding in them. Okay, or TIG anyway. Okay, so uh, for you guys that are uh, trying to find things, oh, let's uh, let's see, what was another one that people ask about? Um, well, anyway, I'll let you guys play around with that, and uh, I don't want to drone on and on about it. But uh, anyway, so the little icon, uh, the little magnifying glass icon, is your friend, and uh, I try to, I try real hard with the search for, or the the keywords to uh, to make it mean something. They're not just random keywords trying to get hits. It's pertinent to the videos, so uh, that's an easy way for you to search, and then I don't have to try to cross link and index these 25 different ways uh, uh, and I have no idea what search words you're using so I'd be guessing uh, at best okay so try that and let me know how that works all right well here's this little silly job here um, this is for a friend of mine at work uh, and he's a, uh, um, a mechanical designer so what he does is um, he uh, designs equipment that gets uh, that gets put into the laboratory uh, using uh, a variety of uh, <laughs> techniques uh, and softwares. Uh, they do finite element analysis and uh, uh, 3D modeling and all that. Um, so um, pretty pretty advanced stuff that uh, that he does. Now this is off of his car. Um, he's got an old. Uh, late 50s Corvette, you know, kind of the old body style before the Stingray. And um, um, this is the alternator bracket off of it. And um, so this guy, you know, like I said, he, he does solid modeling and finite element analysis and all kinds of high-end uh, design, uh, design stuff for a living. And here's what he gives me. He gives me a Sharpie mark. <laughs> he says, where this is, this needs to be here. I go, okay, I get it. I don't need a drawing <laughs> or a model or anything. I can figure that out. Now, um, I checked this, it's steel. Um, and uh, it's not particularly thick. Um, it's chrome plated though, that's kind of the drag here. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut this off and we're gonna move this back. We'll make a couple of cuts to get this back in this area and then we're just gonna weld it up. I mean, it's a pretty boring job. Uh, as far as things go like that, and uh, I don't, you know, I don't know if he's going to get it re-chromed or if he's just going to run it the way it is or what. But anyway, that's his department. So I'm just going to lop that off, and uh, we'll get that uh, put back on for him. So this is one of those jobs that uh, sometimes it's better just to use hand tools, and um, so so that I don't bozo uh, the piece that we want to keep here. So some of this is going to go away. Um, I'm going to put the keeper part in the soft jaws here, the vise, and that way if I slip with the hacksaw, um, I won't uh, um, 
<laughs> I won't bozo the part. It's nice and slippery because it's chrome. Keeping my hand on that so I don't deafen my. Okay, so per usual, nothing's real simple here, right? So I really want to line up the this internal slot, right? And uh, so when I do that, you can see that this thing was so finely made that uh, uh, I have this little step here that I have to kind of deal with. Um, and same here. Although it won't be too bad because I can take some of this material off and it'll actually look better here. Um, you can see that it tapers, you know, but the material between the edge of the slot and here is kind of small and it's thicker here. So this actually works out. This one, doesn't work out quite as good, but uh, we should be able to to blend this a little bit better and then maybe change this radius slightly uh, to uh, to kind of help it looks wise. Um, but let's get it stuck together and then we'll do a little uh, little uh, massaging on that. Okay, so there's the, uh, there's the finished product. Um, the weld's a little tricky because the chrome wants to flash back and uh, it's hard to get a, a good solid fill and I don't want to dig down to, to, uh, to get it to clean off completely and end up thinning this. Um, what did come out okay is uh, kind of reshaping that a little bit so that uh, it didn't have these big lumps on it. It's still a little lumpy out here, but I don't really want to take much more off. This flows a little better, and this flows reasonably well. Um, there's some variation in thickness in this middle section, but I, I don't want to really thin it any more than it already is. So it's it's better looking than it was, and um, and it's the right length at least so he can use it. So anyway, that'll be good enough for a free lunch, right? Okay, I'll let you know.